Hey Wampers, welcome to a new tutorial. This is the first one of a new series where I'll be showing you some tips and tricks on creating. In this one, we are creating in the low poly style, which isn't too easy since we don't actually have polygons. But there are some useful tricks that we can use to make it easier for us to achieve that aesthetic style. One of the first things is to make use of curves instead of trying to cut from a cube. Because we can click on our curves in the scene list, it will open up its options menu at the right where we can select a cube shape for our curve. That's in combination with the roundness on one, which you can find in the same menu, allows us to have an edgy transition between our curve points and is an actual easy way for low poly. You also must know that our curves are made up of many smaller primitives. The density dictates the spacing between those shapes. So if we want a smooth curve, bring up that density or use a little bit of goop. I'm then copying the same shape that I created to make a more complex shape out of it, as well as advance our tree with some branches. For that, I copy and rotate, make a few adjustments to the individual curve points to get it where I want it to be. I also decided to split the tree at the bottom, adding some roots that go over a rock. Here you can see that you can even do some nice curly curves by just rotating one of the points. Next we come to the rock. Here you can have different approaches. I decided to experiment a little bit by grouping some cubes together for the base shape before starting with the cuts. After all that you need to do is make a bunch of cuts all around with the negative shapes. I also included our new feature Material Residue, which you can find in the Properties menu at the right. It allows you to not have negatives affect the color. I then tried to make some simple but lovely grass by using a very thin cube curve that goes from smaller to bigger. Also, did you know that you can change the color for each individual points, which makes some lovely color gradients between the points? Lastly, it's time for the leaves. Those are a bit tricky to get good looking, but it's basically the same principle we used for the rocks. The only difference is that I tried to experiment with the cylinder shapes here. I think the outcome is alright, so let's color it to finalize it. I experimented with the global lighting and added a directional rectangular light to emulate some sunlight on it. Please always take your time to give your creation some love with the lighting and publishing. And here's a look at the final outcome. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. And if you're excited to give it a try for yourself, we're currently running a Forest Low Poly Built Together event. Feel free to join and label your creations with the hashtag Low Poly Forest to be featured and receive a special badge. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.